Hello Year 10s and welcome back to Mathematics. In today's, today's lesson we're continuing our topic of properties of geometric figures and we're going to be talking about congruent triangles. So in today's lesson we want to be able to identify and prove congruency in triangles and there's two things. We want to identify the test for congruence triangles and prove that two triangles are congruent. So let's get into it. So first of all let's talk about what congruent means. Two shapes are congruent if they have they are exactly the same which means they have the exact same shape same shape and the same size. This also means that corresponding sides and angles will be equal. So if you ever look at the diagram here, we've got two triangles and in particular in this topic, we're gonna to be looking at congruent triangles. So if you have a look, these two triangles are congruent. They have the same shape. So if you have a look at all the angles, we've got a 75 degree angle here. We've got an 85 degree angle over here and we've got a 25, 20 degree angle over here. Firstly, so same shape. And the second thing is they have the same size. So if you have a look at the side lengths, the side length between the two, the red and the green angle, this side over here and this side over here, these are in this have have the same length. The side between the 85 degree angle and the 20 degree angle have the same length with that one dash. And the final side, this side over here between the 75 degree angle and the 20 degree angle, these two have the same length. So here, same shape same size. That's what it means for two shapes to be congruent. They are the same shape and the same size. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure that when we, what we want to do is if we want to write that two, con two shapes are, are congruent, we want to you, we use a certain bit of notation to show that and here this is what a congruent statement is. So if we want to write that these two triangles are congruent, what we write is triangle a, B, C is congruent to triangle, uh, what did I have here? It's D, U, E, uh, F, D. So triangle A, B, C is congruent to E, F, D. Now, here, we there's a few things. We need to make sure that the letters are in the same order. So notice here, um, the letters are in matching order. So letters in in matching order. So notice A corresponds to E, B corresponds to F, and C corresponds to D. And so here we need to write it in that same order. So A, B, C is equivalent to, um, is congruent to E, F, D. Now the other things here is there's a bit of notation. So triangle, just in short for when we want to name a triangle, and these uh, this symbol over here, when you've got three horizontal lines, so it's kind of like an equal sign, but you've added an extra one. This just means congruent. So this is our symbol for congruency. So when we want to write a congruent statement, we just write this particular thing. So we're going to be looking at triangles in particular. So we're going to be writing triangle ABC, for example, is congruent, three horizontal lines, to triangle EFD. So triangle symbol, congruent symbol, and we want to make sure that our letters are in the same order. Okay. So what we want to actually be able to do is when we want to see if we've got two triangles, if we want to check whether or not they're congruent, there's a few tests that we can use. And so these tests, it's kind of like the bare minimum, three different ways of testing the bare minimum to see if two triangles are congruent. So here, these are the three tests or four tests that we're going to use. The first one. Uh, so here, two triangles can be tested for congruence if they follow any of the following conditions. So if we have two triangles and they follow any of the following patterns, they are congruent. So let's start with the first one. The first one is if we have three pairs of equal sides, and we call this SSS. So um, SSS is just short for side, side, side. So side, side, side. That's what SSS stands for. And so if we have three, if there's three pairs of equal sides or corresponding equal sides, that means that our um, two triangles are congruent. So for example, if in my first triangle, this side is equal to this side, they give that information to us. Then they also give us that this side is equal to this side. So two dashes, two dashes. And then this side is equal to this side that means that our two triangles are congruent. So if we want to test that two triangles are congruent, we just have to have three pairs of equal sides. That's our first test, one of our tests that we can use. The second test is 
if I've got two corresponding sides and the angle between them. So this is called SAS, and this order is actually really important. So this stands for side angle, oh, let me write that a little bit, bit clearer, side angle side. And so here, if we have two si corresponding sides and the angle in between them being equal. So what this looks like is if I have one side here, one side here, an angle, so let's say for example this angle over here, this angle over here are both equal, so this is equal to this, and one other side, one other side which is equal, this is enough to show that two triangles are congruent. The important thing here is that the angle needs to be between those two sides. So notice here this green angle is between or wedged in between our two equal sides. This is important. This positioning is really important for this test. So another bare minimum test for, in, for us to check that two triangles are congruent is if I've got SAS, side angle in between and another side, they're equal. So if two triangles have the exact same pattern here, that means that they are congruent. Okay, the third one, if I have two angles and any corresponding side, and this is called AAS, so this is angle, angle, side. So if I've got two sides, two angles and any side. So here, for example, if I've got this angle over here, this angle is equal to that angle, so I'm gonna put a black dot, a dot on there. Then I've got another angle, this angle is equal to this angle, and any one of my sides is equal. So let's say this side and this side are equal. That means that my two such triangles, oh, let me put my dashes through, that means my two triangles are congruent. So angle, angle, side, two angles and one side, that means our two triangles are congruent. And the last test is called right angle, hypotenuse and other side. So right angle, so RHS, this just stands for right angle, hypotenuse, and side. And so here, this is a very specific case only when you have a right angle triangle. So the first thing we need is a right angle. So here, I've got my right angle in both of my triangles. Then the second thing I need is a hypotenuse. Now, the, two hypo the hypotenuse is just a side opposite my right angle. So here, I need to make sure that I only have my hypotenuse. It's one of my sides needs to be my hypotenuse. It's the side opposite the right angle. And then the final thing is any one side. So here, this side, if I have any of these, if I have these being equal in my two triangles, that means my two triangles are also congruent. So this is my last test, RHS. Okay, so those are my three, four tests to check if two triangles are congruent. The first one is SSS, side, side, side. The second one is side, angle, side, it's SAS, so two sides and the angle in between them. And the third one is angle, angle, side, AAS. And the final one is right angle, hypotenuse, and side, RHS. So what we can do is we can write a congruent statement for two triangles using these tests. So let's have a go at that. So choosing a test for congruence. Write a congruent statement and the test to prove congruence for the following pairs of triangles. So what we want to do is look at these two triangles and have a look at what type of test matches up best. So let's have a look at this first example. I've got two triangles, A, B, C, and uh, D, E, F. Now, if you have a look, what information are we given with our two triangles? Well, I've got three meters here between A and B. I've got three meters here between D and E. I've got six meters here between F, uh, A and C, and I've got six meters here from F and D. So these are all equal sides that are matching. So we've got matching pairs of sides. And the final thing is I've got this 100 degree at A, and I've got 100 degree at D. So if we have a look at our test, we've got two angles and a side, and notice the angle is between my two sides. So which test is this? Well, it's not SSS, there's no three sides being equal. It's the second one, it's SAS, side, angle, side. If you have a look, I've got two sides, so I've got a pair of equal sides. So I've got side here, AB, side here, DE. Then I've got my angle in between, 100, which is equal. And my final thing is I've got my third side, 6 meters, which is being equal on the other side of the angle. So here what I can write is, I can write triangle ABC is congruent to, and here I need to make sure that I match up my sides here, my um, corners here. So the first one was A, so the corresponding side, uh, angle, not angle, corner is D. Next one was B, and the corresponding one is E. And my final one was uh, C, and that corresponds to F. 
And what I can write in brackets is, well, this is because of the SAS test. So this passes the SAS test, which means that these two triangles are congruent. Okay, so that's all we need to do. So we want to identify from the shape, what type of test do we have here? Okay, so let's have a look at the next one. B, I've got two triangles here, uh, XYZ and uh, ST, uh, STU. So let's have a look at what type of test we can use to test for congruence here. So let's have a look what it matches up. So at X, I've got this 75 degree. I've got 75 degrees at S. So those two match up. Then the next thing I have is 40 degrees at Z. I've got 40 degrees at U. Okay, two, another pair of matching up angles. And the final thing is I've got this side here of 7.2 centimeters between X and Y and 7.2 centimeters between S and T. So let's have a look at the test. Well, I don't have three equal sides. I don't, they don't give me three equal sides that match up. I don't have two corresponding sides and an angle between them. So notice here, I don't have two sides and an angle. But I do have two angles being equal and a corresponding side being equal. So if you have a look, I've got two angles. So my 40 degree angle and my 75 degree angle are equal. Excellent. I've got another side, 7.2 centimeters between X and Y and T, S and T. So that means this is this passes the AAS test. We've got two angles and a side. So what I can write here is triangle. Now I'm going to write here X, Y, Z. Doesn't matter what order you do it for the first one, as long as the second one matches up. And that's correspond, um, congruent to triangle. And so X matches up with S, Y matches up with T, and U matches up with Z. And the test that we used was AAS. Okay. So here, when we're trying to choose the test for congruence, we want to look at our four tests and see which one of our four tests matches up with the diagrams that we have. Do we have three pairs of equal sides? If that's the case, that is the SSS test. So here, SSS test, if we have three pairs of equal matching sides, that means we've passed the SSS test. If we have two corresponding sides and an angle in between them, that's the SAS, SAS test. If we have two angles and any side, that's the AAS test. And then we have a right angle, a hypotenuse, and also one side. That just means that we've passed the um, RHS test. Okay, so that's how we can actually check if two triangles are congruent and write it as a congruent statement and also the test that we need to use. Next thing we want to be able to do is actually prove that two triangles are congruent. Now, in mathematics, a proof is an argument Proof is an argument which uses evidence and facts and laid out lay, lay and we lay out our evidence and facts to help show that something is true. So when we are dealing with congruent triangles, what we need to do is we need to lay out all the evidence from the diagrams and the correct congruence test to show that the two triangles are congruent. And so what we are going to do here is we're going to actually be proving, so not only just identifying the test and writing the congruence statement, but we want to be able to identify, show clearly that two triangles are congruent, proving that two triangles are congruent. So let's actually go through the steps. So for our steps, congruence proof for triangles. So here, the first one, you want to have a look at your two triangles and identify what congruence tests we're going to use. Is it SSS? Is it a SAS? Is it AAS or is it RHS? Which of my four tests are we going to use? Then, from there, we want to state each piece of evidence from the diagram to which form the congruence. And here, we've got a few pieces of notation. The first thing, if you've got two side lengths being the same, so here, these are four sides. What we want to do is we write the sides by naming the endpoints. So for example, if you have a, a triangle and two sides, and, and for one of our sides, we have the endpoints being A and B. So what we write is AB. We call this line AB. This line here is just AB. We name it by the endpoints. The other thing is if we have an angle, if we have an angle, we name it using the angle symbol, so angle symbol, and the three points to create the angle. So for example, if I have an angle here of A, B, and C, and the angle is over here, what I do is I use the angle notation. So this angle is angle B, A, C. We need to make sure that the middle letter is the it's a letter at the angle. And this, so here, this helps me label this particular angle. So angle B, A, C is just going to be this angle over here. 
So what we want to do is state each pair of corresponding sides. So for example, if on one of your diagrams, AB is equal to, for example, DE, we just write AB is equal to DE. If one of my angles, so angle BAC is equal to angle uh, DEF, I just write angle ABC is equal to, uh, angle BAC is equal to angle DEF. And so we list down all of the pieces of evidence that help me to my congruence proof. So each one of those three pieces of evidence. Then at the end, we write a concluding statement. So we write that congruent statement that we did before, including our reason. And here, we want to include a bit of notation. So when we conclude, like you would with an essay, at the end of your essay, you write a concluding statement or a concluding paragraph. And usually, in math, in, you usually start it with something like therefore. In mathematics, we do use def, therefore as well, but we use a symbol for therefore. Therefore, it's just written as three dots in a triangle formation like this. So this just means therefore, and this is like you saying, in, in the end, this just means that these two triangles are congruent. So what we want to be able to do is prove that two triangles are congruent. So here we've got four examples that we're going to go through. I'm going to show you how to do this. So let's have a look at this first one. So prove the following pairs of triangles are congruent. So you have a look at these two triangles. I've got ABC on my left and I've got uh, DEF on my right. Now if you have a look, we've got three pairs of equal sides. So you notice here I've got six over here, I've got six over here. I've got a four over here, I've got a four over here, and I've got a five over here and a five over here. So here, this tells me that immediately I'm going to be using the SSS test. I've got three pairs of equal sides. So to prove it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just list out each pair of equal sides. So I'm going to first start off, have a look at that six that I highlighted. So here on my left-hand side triangle, that's just a side AB. So when I'm dealing with sides, I'm just naming it by the endpoint. So for this side over here, where my six is, my endpoints are A and B. So that's why I'm going to write A, B. Then I'm going to do the same thing for my other triangle. Now, if you have a look, six is where D and E are. So I'm going to write here, this is equal to D and E. So I'm going to write here, this is just a side. So I'm going to put that bracket S just for side. Okay. Then the next one, I'm going to do this pink one. So my endpoints are A and C. So I'm just going to write this as A, C. And my triangle on my right, well, that just corresponds to df. So I'm going to write here df. So this is another side. And the final one was bc. So bc is equal to 5. And on the other one, it's just going to be at ef. So here, just like before, we want to just make sure that the um, letters are in the matching order as well. And so here I've got my three equal sides and I've labeled which ones they are. So ab is equal to de. So in my first triangle, I've got AB, and that corresponds to DE in my second triangle, corresponding tri um, in my second congruent triangle. In my first triangle, I've got AC, and that's four, has a length of four, and that corresponds to the side DF in my second triangle. And the final one was BC, which corresponds to EF. So now that I've laid out all my my evidence, all my, all my facts, I can just write a concluding statement. I can go, therefore, triangle ABC is corresponding to, and I need to make sure I write it in the same order, a corresponds to D, B corresponds to E, and uh, C corresponds to F. And the reason for this was because as we identified, this is S, S, S. So that's what we need to write when we're doing these congruence proof, proofs. We need to lay down all the evidence that we have from the diagrams and then write a concluding statement at the end. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. So if you have a look at this one, we've got two triangles once again, and let's have a look at what kind of matching information do we have? What kind of um, equal sides do we have? So here I've got a 10 between A and C. I've got a 10 between uh, D and F. I've got a five, side length of five between uh, A and B, and I've got a side length of five between D and E. And I've also got this angle here of 110 degrees, and I've got this angle here of 110 degrees. So if you think back to all of those congruence uh, tests that we have from before, this is just the same as SAS. I've got two. I've got a side, an angle. So here I've got one side, one side. I've got the angle. I've got an angle, and then I've got another side on the other side and that encloses that angle. So here, this is going to be SAS. That's the test I'm going to use. So just like we did before, we're going to lay down all of that information that we have. Now, the order that you put the evidence in isn't important, but because it's an SAS test, it might be nice to put it in that order, side, angle, side. So let's choose, let's do that. So let's start off. In my first triangle, I've got side AB. So that has a side length of five, and that's equal to, in my second triangle, side DE. That also has a side length of five. So that's going to be S. That's one of my sides. 
Then the second thing is I've got this angle of 110 degrees. I'm going to write this down. So this is angle uh, B, A, C. So here, the important thing to note is that the middle letter is where the angle is. And in this case, the middle letter should be A because that is where my uh, angle is. That 110 is at A. And so this is equal to angle, well, that matches up with E, D, F. So that's my angle. So here on my second triangle, D was where the angle was at. So here I'm going to put D in the middle. And the final bit was I've also got this other side, AC, which is equal to DF. They both have side length of 10. They both have a length of 10. And so here it's going to be my final side. So therefore I can write triangle ABC is equal to triangle, oh, it's congruent. Oops, I did, I'm not sure if I did that. I did, I did do it right the first time. It's congruent to, and I need to make sure it match up. A matches up with D, B matches up with E, and F matches up with C. So here, this is because of the SAS test. So that's how we do these proofs. We lay down each piece of evidence from our two triangles. Where do we see matching up equal angles? Where do we see matching up equal sides? And then from there we go, okay, cool. What test does that link up to? Now here, you could actually do all of these steps without doing your test first and then going back and realizing what type of test it is. So let's have a look at this next example, for example. So here, for example C. Example C. Well, we've got, what, in, what matching piece of inf information do we have here? Well, if you have a look, I've got this 80 degrees. I've got this 80 degrees here. So what I can write is, well, that angle on my first triangle, that's just going to be angle BAC. That's 80 degrees and that's corresp that's equal to, well, what does it match up with in my second triangle? Well, that's angle EDF. EDF. And so here, this is an angle. What else is matching up here? The second thing is I've got a, well, I've got an angle of 60 degrees in my first triangle. I've also got an angle of 60 degrees in my second triangle. So here at angle E and angle B, so this is going to be angle A, B, C in my first triangle. And in my second one, that's angle D, E, F. They both match up and that's another angle. Okay. I've laid out two pieces of information that matches up in my two triangles. What else matches up? The final thing is I've got this side length here at B, C of five. And I've got this side length here and E, F of five as well. So those two are equal as well. So I can write B, C is equal to E, F. So if you have a look on the side here, I've just already, I've just identified what test I'm going to need to use. So this is the AAS test. This, these two triangles pass the AAS test, which means that they're congruent. So here I can write, therefore, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle, and I need to make sure they match up. 80 is at um, D, 60 is at E, and that leaves me with F at the end. And so that's because of the AAS test. So there we go. That's how we do these, this congruence proof. We can actually just write down what pieces of matching evidence do we, we have and then work towards that. Now this last one is a little bit trickier and in particular, when you see um, something in these two triangles, it should tell you that you need to use this particular test most of the time. Sometimes you might be using another one, but here we've got a different one. So here we've got two triangles. We've got uh, two side lengths of four that match up. We've got a side length of seven, which matches up. And we've got this angle of 90 degrees in both of them. Now here, what we need to check, what we immediately are going to be saying is, hey, we've got a right angle, which means I probably need to use the RHS test. Now with the RHS test, we also need to make sure that we've got the hypotenuse as well. The hypotenuse is just a side opposite the right angle. So if you have a look here, the side opposite the angle, that's seven, and that's equal in both of them. So that means I'm going to use my RHS test. So let's just lay down all the information here. The first thing is I've got both of my angles. So here, BAC is going to be equal to EDF. Now, because I'm using that RHS test, I need to write something else as well. So I'm going to write here, BAC is equal to angle EDF. And because we need to actually show that this is a right angle, we just need to write here that this is equal to 90 degrees. And this is my right angle. This is only the case when we're doing the RHS test. Every other test, we don't need to lay, um, identify what those lengths are. We just need to write that they're equal. But for this one, because we need to use right, show that it's a right angle, we need to write that, that it's equal to 90 degrees. Okay, then from there, we can just start labeling our other piece of information. So here, well, I've got my hypotenuse as well. So here, 
BC is going to equal to EF. And this is my hypotenuse. And the final thing was also AB, which is equal to DE, and that's my side. And so here I can just write, therefore, triangle ABC is congruent to, and I need to make sure they match up, A matches up with D, B matches up with E, and C matches up with F. And the reason for that is my RHS test. So that's how we write these congruence proofs. We want to lay down all the, inf all of the information from our diagram. Where do we see matching angles? Where do we see matching sides? And then we just lay it down using these pieces of notation. Then at the end, we just write our concluding statement that says that my two triangles are congruent and what test that passed. So that's it for today's lesson. Let's just do a quick recap of what we did today. In today's lesson, we talked about what congruency means in triangles. So congruence just means that two shapes have the same shape and the same side. So that means I have equal angles and equal sides. And the notation for that was, in particular when we're dealing with triangles, is we use triangle ABC is congruent to, so three equal lines, triangle EFD, for example. And we wanted to make sure that all the corners match up in both of our two triangles. We identified the four tests for congruency. So our four tests were SSS, three pairs of equal sides. SAS, two sides and the angle between them being equal. AAS, two pairs of equal sides and one side being equal. And the final one being RHS, a right angle, the hypotenuse, and also another side. If our two pairs of triangles passes any three of these tests, any four of these tests, that means that they are congruent. And we went through how to write a congruent statement for two triangles. We had to make sure that we wrote the triangle symbol and that the, the, uh, the congruent symbols and that our corners were matching up and identify what test it was. And then finally, we went through how to prove that two triangles are congruent. And so here we had to lay down or write down all the pieces of evidence to show that my two triangles are congruent. So that's it for today's lesson. Hopefully that helped. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me or let me know. I'm more than happy to try and help you. But until next time, year 12s, I hope you, year 10s, I hope you guys are staying safe wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.